There is something about these circuits that is none of the resistors seems to be in series or parallel which makes it hard to solve them directly. So how are we going to do it? How can we find the equivalent resistance of the circuit or the current in any branch or the voltage at any node? That's exactly what we are going to do in this video. We are going to be using the concept of equipotential points that is the points which are at same potential to solve these circuits. So imagine we have two equipotential points then we know current cannot flow across it since current always flows from a higher potential to a lower potential. Secondly, if we have two equal resistors then the incoming current would divide equally because each path has the same resistance. If they were unequal, then more current would flow through less resistance path. Third is how voltage would drop across series of resistors. Consider we have two different resistors in series and let's say they are connected across 10 volt. Now we know there will be a current flow and due to which a voltage drop. Say for example, two volt drops across the first resistor then remaining 8 volt should get dropped across the second one since the total voltage is 10 volt. Similarly, if 3 volt gets dropped here, then the voltage drop across the second one will be 7 volt. Here we have a circuit of 5 resistors each of 1 kilo ohm and let's connect it to a 5 volt source. Now the first thing we notice is the potential at this point will be 5 volt and the other end will be 0 volt that is entire 5 volt will be dropped across this resistor setup if we assume some current incoming let's say for example 2 ampere then at this node the current has to split equally we can say this because the resistances in both the path are symmetric or equal you can see this path is exactly the same as the other one. The way the resistors are connected is the same. If equal currents go into each branch, then the voltage drop across them would be the same. Hence, the voltage that appears at these two points are also the same. There we go. We have the equipotential points and this resistor is connected between those two equipotential points, which means no current flows through it. We can simply remove this resistor and now the entire circuit is very much simplified. We just have two resistors in series at top and bottom and then their combination are connected in parallel to each other. Also if we want to find the potential at this point we can easily say it's gonna be 2.5 volt since the two resistors are equal and current is the same they have equal drops. So if 2.5 volt drops across this resistor then the remaining 2.5 volt will be reflected at this point. Similarly we can easily find the currents in the branches using B is equal to IR. Consider this circuit. Now we have 12 resistors here. We are gonna analyze it in the same way. If the voltage applied is 5 volt then this point will be at 5 volt and this point at 0 and we can see that the top and the bottom paths are alike but the middle path is completely different so if we assume some 4 ampere current incoming then let's say 1 ampere and 1 ampere splits at the top and the bottom and the remaining 2 ampere goes through the middle one now the current which i assume here are totally random I just take them for analyzing and getting those equipotential points. These are not the true values. Now since the currents in these branches are the same, they have the same drop. As a result, we can say the potential at these points are going to be the same. Likewise, we see that these two points also have the same potentials. Now we got our equipotential points. This means we can track and merge these points using a short circuit since their potentials are same and they are the same points and now 
we see that these resistors are connected in parallel so we replace them with their equivalent that is 1 kilo ohm parallel to 1 kilo ohm gives half kilo ohm doing the same thing to these ones too now this circuit looks simplified but still none of the resistors seems to be in series or parallel then how are we gonna solve it let's hunt for something more in the original circuit we can say the potential at this point is 2.5 volt since the current flowing is the same in this and in this branch we can say this due to symmetry if 4 ampere current splits as 1 ampere 2 ampere and 1 ampere it should recombine as 1 ampere 2 ampere and 1 ampere into 4 ampere hence in this part given resistances are equal the current is the same so voltage drop will be the same therefore this point will be at 2.5 volt going back to the simplified circuit we see that none of the current is entering other branches hence we can drag this point out from this node now all we have is bunch of resistors series and parallel which can be easily solved to find the equivalent resistance now what about the voltage at this point we have to be a little careful here that although there are three resistors in this case and overall voltage across it is 5 volt we can't take a drop of 5 by 3 5 by 3 and 5 by 3 volt across each one since the current is going to split up here and thus bringing in additional resistance to the path all we got to do is just need to take these two resistors in series and parallel with this one so replacing this resistor now we get a path of three resistors we can add up these to find the total resistance then find the total current in this path and then we can find the voltage drop now one last example before the D-Day here too we can make the same analysis this point will be at 5 volt and this at 0 volt the current coming through if say it's 4 ampere will split as 1 ampere 2 ampere and 1 ampere currents will be the same in these two parts because they are symmetric thus same voltage drops so we get our equipotential points in the same way equal drops across these two resistors make these two points equipotential now as you see there can't be any current in these two resistors so let's just throw them out now the whole circuit is very much simplified we can easily find the equivalent resistance or voltage at any node i guess i'll leave it to you as an exercise now let's do this the one main difference in the circuits previously discussed to this is that it is an infinite circuit but no worries we got it first let's make the same analysis and find out the equipotential points applying a voltage of 5 volt this point will be at potential of 5 volt and at this point it will be 0 volt now assuming a current of 4 ampere it's gonna split up like 1 ampere 2 ampere and 1 ampere the currents in these two parts are same because the resistances are symmetrically same in these path but the middle one is different similarly at the other end currents should unite exactly the same way it split up that is 1 ampere 2 ampere and 1 ampere all right now the 2 ampere current at this point further splits up into let's say 0.5 1 and 0.5 ampere again the currents in these branches would be the same because of the symmetry same thing happens at the other end they combine in similar fashion now we see that none of this 1 ampere current is entering this path instead entirely going through this path same for this 0.5 ampere taking entirely this path so the current in this path is zero that would mean that these two points are equipotential similarly just by extending this idea we get all these points as equipotential thus no current flows through these resistors 
and we can just knock them out. So it's somewhat simplified but not yet. We got to take care of the connection going to infinity. Now what we can do here is assume the equivalent resistance of this circuit as x kilo ohm. Then if we take this much part of the circuit equivalent resistance would be still x kilo ohm because this stuff goes till infinity so it hardly would care if you leave one out then now we can make the analysis now these 1k and 1k can be joined to 2k now this 2k and 2k branches are parallel therefore becomes 1k again we have this 1k x and 1k in series so we get 2 plus x k now the 2 plus x kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm are in parallel therefore the overall resistance which we assumed as x kilo ohm should be equal to 2 plus x parallel to 1 kilo ohm by solving this we get the value of x as 0 0.732 ohm i hope this video was useful and i will see you all next time